Okay. Uh, all right, so I just uh, redid it. Now it has the broadcast button, so that's good. But uh, hopefully everybody comes back. Of course. All right. Give me a second. All right. Uh, yeah, of course. Anytime anything that we do that works great the first time is always going to be some sort of problem, of course. So, um, all right. I think uh, uh, Mr. Grace just uh, checked in. All right. While everybody's checking in, let me shout out everybody that uh, was doing stuff on Instagram and things of that nature. Oh, man, of course. Uh, I'm gonna turn what up? Yo, what's going on? All right, cool. So we got Chase March. All right, we got Sean Grace, and hopefully... Is Chase uh, in there? I don't see Chase. Yeah, he just joined. Oh, there he is. All right. All right. And then hopefully Guy will... And now the important one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always something. All right. Um, real quick, big shouts to uh, Shock Sound G, uh, Mr. Grace, Mike Prez, Hurricane <laughs> Productions, uh, B4 Bomb, um, uh, Miss Phenomenal 407, <laughs> Do Rich Things, Dead 702, Sididi, uh, Planet of Music, um, Datton, Ahern, um, yeah, everybody that's liked things on uh, the group, good old uh, Instagram, yeah, the tracks yeah, that we're playing. Yeah. I'm standing up. All right. Um, all right, so now, yeah, we're broadcasting now. So awesome. Okay. So we're good now. All right, so uh, everybody just kind of go ahead and introduce, introduce themselves, themselves, please. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Grace, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. <laughs> all right. Uh, I am Sean Grace, and I'd be the owner of a hip-hop community called Hip Hop is Bled on Google+. So if you're on Google+, and you like hip-hop music, hip-hop hip -hop is bled. Yeah, I've been saying that you guys are over 1,600 members, but now it's over 1,700 members. That's crazy. Growing every day, growing every day. Nice. Yeah, I am Chase March. I'd be radio host and producer up in Canada for the show Dope FM, which is on Saturday nights, 93.3 CFMU. And I write and do the podcast for The Word is Bond at thewordisbond.com. All right, and our very special guest. Hi, I'm Guy Rute, CEO of War Media. All right, word. And not just, you know, just War Media, you're, you're CEO, co-CEO. Co-CEO. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, real quick, who's the other co-CEO? Uh, a little MC you might have heard of named Farrell Munch. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. We're going to talk about yeah. that. But first, yeah. I have slides now, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm mad. Uh, <laughs> it's so hip-hop, you know what I mean? So, But let's start at the beginning. <laughs> hip-hop you know I mean? slideshow. Let, let's start at the very beginning, the come-up of, of Guy. Say your last name one more time. Rute. Routine. All right. Uh, what was the first instance of hip hop that you remember? Like, when did hip hop? And I remember. I'm old, man. You don't want to talk about that. Uh, let's go all the way back, cause like I want okay. people to know that you're an OG and you're speaking of yeah. wisdom. You know what I'm saying? That's some the new. First, jack. The first, my first recognition of hip hop as a something coming up was in the park. I grew up in Staten Island, New York, and um, you know, park jams, man, and it, you know, like. I'm like 10 years old, it's like 1980, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's Park Champs, and, I, and going out and hearing the DJs play, and then hearing somebody grab a mic and start rhyming, and then seeing kids break dancing, and, you know, we were all in graffiti crews, and 
it was this culture happening right before our eyes and you know we weren't recognizing it as a culture but we just knew it you know we knew we were we knew it was something special because even at a young young age I would travel to places that I can't believe I used to get on a train to go to the Bronx at 11 12 years old just to see you know what was happening you know um it was an amazing amazing time and uh I came up with um uh the four some D's on Staten oh, Island, who were actually the four some C's then, yep, and uh, I they were. Uh, show too. So, excuse me. No, no, I'm saying I got that slot in the slideshow too because okay. with the Force MCs, MDs. Yeah. They kind of took you under their wing, right? I mean. Oh yeah, no, that, they, everything I I owe so much to them, uh, particularly Stevie D, who is like still my brother. I still talk to at least once a week. Um, because when this thing was happening, and they're older than me, and so they would take me up to Harlem and to Bronx River and to to these places, and uh, and I would I would get to see this culture at at such an early stage up close, you know, because I was with them, and it was just a beautiful thing. And uh, you know, when they got signed to Tommy Boy and they became the Four Some D's, and they were on tour with New Edition and all of that, they also I'm still in high school, and uh. During the summertime, they would take me on the road, and I would go on their tour bus. And Staten Island is a very small, close knit community, so you know it was like you know all of us would jump on the bus, and we'd go to Connecticut, or we'd go to DC, and backstage at the concert with New Edition and Sherelle, and and it was like you know it was like my first real introduction to the music business, for real business, you know. Yeah, that's dope. So I mean, so you got like the insider. So were you carrying like bags for them, or you're just there observing everything? Not really. I was just there hanging out, to be honest with you. Um, you know, everybody brought their friends or their girlfriends or whatever, and you know, I was just one of the you know guys sleeping on a on the floor of the bus and just getting this kind of experience. And uh, it was just an amazing, you know, to be on a fresh fest, you know, with with you know Run DMC and Houdini, and you know, to be able to go to that. Is a real, you know, and at, at, at I'm what 15 years old, 14, 15 years old is an amazing, amazing come up. Yeah. Now, uh, and but I mean, but you went from being, I guess, prof professional entourage, kind of starting. Yes, your own I was crew. turtle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you started your I own crew, turtle. right? Like, tell me about the soul shocking MCs. Wow. Oh man. So yeah. Well, that was simultaneous with that because. You know, one of the reasons I even became tight with them was I was in a rap crew called Soul Shock and MCs. Uh -oh, Shout out. What was your what was your rap name? You gotta tell me your rap name. Swirl. Swirl? Swirl. S W I R L. Ah. And uh, Wait, real anybody real who knows me from eighteen and under still calls me Swirl to this day. Like <laughs> they don't even they don't call me guys. I'm Swirl to them. <laughs> so that's you know, how you know somebody knows me for real. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a that that's, there's a story in that. Where where did Swirl come from? Well, actually, I stole it. It was uh, a <laughs> my man James Courtney, who was a a graffiti artist. He used to write Swirl on the wall. He wasn't an MC though, so I just said I'm gonna use that as my MC name. Like I was nine, maybe, you know. <laughs> and I just liked the way it looked on the wall. Oh, so man. in the early stage, even though I don't condone it, I was biting back then. All right, now who was in uh, Soul Shocking MCs? It was uh, Chili Love, my man, my cousin, um, JB, my brother S, who's passed away, oh, and my cousin the Lord Shun. And originator, original member, founding member of Soul Shocker was a dude named Master Jam, who then later left the group. We were the Soul Shocking MCs then. Then we became the Soul Shocker Five when he left. This is back when you used to have five cats in your crew. And our DJ was named Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> nice. Nice. So. Oh, that's dope. All right. And so you would tour, I guess, with the... We uh, weren't really touring. I mean, we were touring the city. You know, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, right. entering in battles and shows and stuff. We did a cut. I saw a flyer. Somebody sent me a flyer the other day of a show that we did with... Uh, there's a crew on Staten Island called The Fly Four. Shout out to Bobby Bell, Bobby J, Sight. And then there was uh, four MCs who would have you know, large crew and us, and it was like a Staten Island battle at the CYO. You know, it was cool. All right, that's dope. All right, so about what year is this? About, like, 90? 83. Uh, high school. Oh. I'm in high school. Yes, 83, 84. All right, all right. So then 
Now, with uh, the Soul Shock and MCs, you guys were trying to get signed, or? Oh, it was weird back then because it wasn't like a bunch of people getting signed. Getting signed wasn't. We were just trying to get wreck, as we would call it back then. We were just trying to get get a get on a flyer, get on a show. Um, there was a couple of late night radio shows, WHBI. We were just trying to get heard, okay. you know, and nobody thought of this. I mean, not nobody, but most of us didn't think of this as a some long term career or, you know, a couple of people had made it at that point. You know, Run DMC was just kicking off and, you know, Grandmaster Flash and them. But getting a record deal wasn't even like kind of the point uh, about to until, like the until, until, until the fourth got a record deal. Huh? <laughs> All right. No, it's just about being like the best on your block and then honing your Yeah, being the best on your block, it. being the best in your hood and maybe getting recognized by Harlem Cats or Bronx Cats was really, and I was going to Bertram High at the time, which was in Manhattan, and, you know, um, Jungle Brothers, well, you know, Mike from Jungle Brothers went there, and Q-Tip went there, and Ali Shaheed, and they young, you know, they were like a year younger than me, and, uh, but so everybody was buzzing about this culture, but, you know, at that time, you could get on the radio without getting signed, it wasn't even like, you know, getting signed wasn't even the point, really, it was just getting wrecked. And being the best in your circle, and uh, you know, and then I, I guess we didn't really have a major plan. Oh, okay, all right, dope. You know? And then, um, okay, so then, but then, you did get signed, but it was with the group AfterShock, right? Yeah, or? that was that was years later. Um, I had eventually joined forces with my my partner Frost, who was a break dancer, and I realized, you know, he's a break dancer, he's a rapper, he's a kid from Queens that moved to Staten Island. And he, um, we just became friends, and I realized he could sing. And uh, I was like, yo, we should form, like, a sing-rap group, you know. And, uh, you know, we made, you know, long story short, made some demos. You know, we were connected enough, and uh, through different incarnations, we finally got, we we, we met a, a crew who eventually became the family stand, this uh, woman, Sandra St. Victor, who I actually still work with to this day. Nice. Uh, heard, my, heard the demo got it to her producers, they reproduced it, and we ended up getting a deal on Virgin Records. And this is like 89. Nice. Yeah. You, you want to say something uh, there, Chase? Or? Yeah, 89, that's an interesting year. Things were starting to pop then, like commercially too, eh? Yeah, no, it, at that point, you're talking about a full-blown culture at that point. You're talking, you know, Def Jam is in full effect, LL Cool J is a, a bona fide star. Um... You know, Run DMC, a rock star, Beastie Boys. You talking about? But now I'm in a I'm in a weird state because I'm in a group that's really closer to, you know, a pop group, a pop slash dance. So I was on the road, you know, with Tony, 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 and I was on the road with uh Boys to Men, and even sometimes some of the freestyle acts like TKA and that kind of stuff. Um, but my core, her love was hip hop. But the fact that my partner was Spanish, and he was a singer. And the biggest record we had was a ballad. You know, we kind of got shoved into that world, which was fine. But, uh, you know, it wasn't where my, you know, I'm, I'm a Rakim guy and a KRS guy and, you know, Big Daddy Kane. And I wanted to be kind of around that. So, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and then so from there, you kind of, uh, I guess, kind of stepped away from the limelight, right? From after that group. By the way, yeah. that, was a, that was a cool name, Aftershock, because it was Soul Shocking MC, then I guess it was After the Crew. Yeah, that yeah. where the name came from? Aftershock, you know. Oh. And you know what? It wasn't planned that way, but that's just where the, that's how it ended up. Uh, we had written a song called Aftershock, and that's what we, we said, oh, that's going to be our name. But um, how what happened was Staten Island, like I said, is a very small community, and because I was one of the cats that had a deal, and, you know, I came up with, you know, I knew Method, and I knew RZA and them cats, and, you know, we all came from, like, similar, you know, similar backgrounds, and so anybody doing music at a level, uh, RZA at the time was Prince, uh, Prince, Prince Rock King, he was signed to Tommy Boy, and, you know, he had Jizza around who was signed to Cold Chillin', and, I, you know, I got a, I, I have actually a major deal on Virgin Records with, you know, and so I started to help broker, you know, I could get people to meet people, and so people started coming to me for, for stuff, and, uh, my boy Wiggs brought by this kid Shaheem, the rugged child. Yes. He was twelve. Yes. And uh Wiggs my boy Wiggs, who's like still one of my best friends, was managing the producer R and S. And they all lived in Stapleton Projects and they played me the demos 
And I said, cool, let me like, you know, let me bring it around. So I brought it to my people at Virgin. They flipped out and they wanted to do it. And so it's like I became like just instantly manager. I'm still in Aftershock, you know. And um, but I had more experience than Wigs, and so he was like partner with me on this. And uh, I started partnering with him, and I started. I realized I liked that better. I never was a great performer in my mind. I never was a great MC. And I, it's funny. It's funny that I work with Pharaoh because I remember the song that made me quit was um, "Extinction Level Agenda" on on, on a Stress album. Oh, I heard that song. I heard that verse he did, and I was like, "I'm never, no matter how much I practice, no matter what it is, I'll never be able to do that." And you know what? If I can't do that, I don't want to do it. Like I, 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 I will never be able to do that. And he, I, so I tell Farrell all the time he retired me from being an artist. <laughs> wow, Farrell Mont retiring MCs. That's crazy. All right. Yeah, he retired. I wasn't even an MC. I'm not even. I, I didn't even put myself in the same category. I was like a a dude that rapped. I love the culture, but you know, nobody taught us. You know, we didn't have you know career day where somebody would say, "Yo, these are the 20 other things you can do in the music business other than being an artist." Right. And so I wanted to be around it. And I wanted to be in the music business, but I didn't know you, you, you didn't have to be an artist. And I figured it out on the Shaheen Project. All right, all right, cool. So, uh, well, all right, now the, the way the show works, it's almost like it's two shows. There's the audio version that, you know, people over okay. the airwaves are hearing. And then when we're playing the tracks, we're going to keep talking about stuff behind the scenes. So people, so it's like almost two shows okay. in one. And so people will check out the YouTube link a little bit later on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So let's, you were just talking about them. Let's, let's get into a Feral Monster joint. Uh, damage. You know what I'm saying? Get into that track. Yo. That one's crazy. And uh, oh, traumatic stress is on the April fifteenth. Yes, <laughs> April fifteenth. Word up. Right, I'm gonna play bad. We play bad. Mm. Thank you, by the way, for the clean version. And big shout to Satori. She puts in mad work. You know what I'm saying? Satori is, you know, I call her my boss. <laughs> you know. <laughs> nice. All right. Cool. She helps so, run the show. Yeah, yeah. She puts in a lot of work. So shout to her. All right, we're going to get into this joint damage, and then behind the scenes, I want to talk more about your industry career in the major label, you know what I'm saying? Because Let's manager, professional connector, all that goodness. All right, Let's so do it. It's our yeah. show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll be right back. I think we're going to be broadcasting on 91.5 FM when we come back. So uh, word up. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's our show. We got Guy from War Media, oh, and we have uh, his co-CEO. You may have heard of him. This is uh, Farrell Monch with his track, Damage. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be right back. It's easy. Hit us up in the chat room if you have any questions. It's our show.net. You may have to refresh the page because there was a problem with the Google Hangout and I had to make a new one. So refresh the page if you're hearing my voice right now. All right. Be right back. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Word. So um, give us a little rundown about your, uh, you know, your industry credentials, you know what I'm saying? Because you put in a lot of work, you know what I'm saying? Well, okay, so I started working with Shaheem. Uh, Post-Shaheem, I worked with uh, a group, an artist named Corey Glover, who was from the uh, rock group Living Color. And uh, I got him signed to um, the Face Records. We put out an album called Hymns. So that was my first Grammy Award winner. And then... Um, I worked with a group called Goodfellas. They had a song called Sugar Honey Iced Tea in the 80s. I mean, in the 80s, the 90s, late 90s. And then I worked with um, I worked with uh, the Family Stand, who had a song Ghetto Heaven. They were like my producers when I when I started. I don't know if you heard all that. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it. We heard it. <laughs> okay. So uh, I worked with Family Stand, and I worked with them as producers, and they produced uh they ended up producing Paul Abdul's second album, and they produced a lot of the stuff I was working with Desri, and and so from there, I ended up um, becoming an A and R consultant at Sony in 2000, from uh, 2005 to 2007, and uh, I worked with Raphael Sadiq, and uh, on the Way I See It album, and I, I worked with uh, you know John Legend and uh, uh, people like that over there. And uh, when I left Sony in 2007 is when I hooked up with Farrell Munch. And uh, we started War Media. And we decided we wanted to put records out and be part of great art and, you know. And uh, 
that's what we're doing and working with, you know, Gene Gray and folks like that, you know. Yeah, so. uh, uh, Mystic. Is Mystic, Mystic. on? Nice. Okay, yeah, because Mystic is dope. Like, I've yeah, Mystic. Her since... We're actually putting a new record out on her, I'm going to say June. Oh. Uh, it's a great album called Beautiful Resistance that she's had for a while, but we've been waiting for the right time because Mystic is an activist and uh, she's in school and she, and she, you know, she's in Haiti and she's, and you know, she does a, you know, her career is not just solely about music and she, you know, and so, you know, she, she took a, a, a real serious break and then about four years, three, four years ago, she started working on this album and she finished it. And that's when we kind of connected and we've been trying to, you know, wait for the right time and to put it out when, when she can have some time to help promote it. But also, you know, when it goes, coincides with the other things that she wants to do but big up to Mystic man the album is incredible and uh, you know some of her best work and I'm excited to put that out I, I believe it's going to be June that's when her semester ends and we're going to try to you know, work it through the summer I can't wait to hear that I've been trying to get her on the program for a while but the timing's never been right to make it happen so cool stuff well now you know me so just hit, it, hit me up and we'll get her on nice. awesome. yeah, we'll, we'll make it that we'll make it happen like um, this is like years before, like like when Cuts for Luck, Scars for Freedom, like just came out. She was yeah. on tour with um, Good Vibes. Yes. I think it was, and they stopped through right. Orlando. Good Vibes was the label, yeah. Yeah, and we like I brought her to the like the pirate station. You know what I'm saying that we had going on. Right. So yeah, so she was mad cool back even back then. So I'm glad to see she's still doing her thing. Yeah, she's great. Great people. Great people and great and, and a great artist. You know. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, Guy was yes. talking about how you can do um, different things in hip-hop because I think a lot of people see that there's only, like, two lanes you can do, right? Like, you can be an MC, you can be right. a DJ. Um, so it's kind of cool that you can be an a and R and you can, like, help develop artists too. So what was it like when you were yeah. at a r It was great. It was. I, I found that I was really suited for it. You know, people ask me what the qualifications for a and R, you know, really are. Obviously, there's a bunch of people that are not qualified, but the, the real qualifications is you have to be a, a true, like, a music nerd. You got to be a lover. You got to be, you know, you got to have encyclopedic knowledge of, and references. And Because for an artist who are, you know, traditionally self-centered and, you know, really maniacal about what they do, for them to respect you, you got to, they got to believe you know what you're talking about, you know? And they got to believe that you can help them get to what they're trying to get to. And usually if you could give them references, you can say, okay, I know what you're trying to do. Here's a better way to get there. Then you'll earn their respect. So I'm a nerd musically. I was the guy as a kid. I was, you know, nine years old reading Stevie Wonder album cover credits to see who was singing background. You know, I was that guy, you know. So uh, I was a natural fit to be an A&R or a natural fit to be, you know, an executive producer because – you know, I, I love music in that way. To this day, still, you know, I'm still like, oh, man, who's playing drums on that? Oh, you know, who did that? You know, and, you know, I find out nerd, you know, information, and I'm like, ah, did you know that Michael Jackson and Eddie LaVert sang background on Stevie Wonder's All I You know, like, I'm that nerd, you know what I mean? So that's the kind of passion and love you got to have for A&R, you know, and there's not a lot of people that have that, in my opinion. I think people love what they love, but I love... I love music across the board. I love jazz and I love rock and I love hip hop. And I love, you know, I'm a hip hop kid all day, but you know, I, I, you know, anything that's great, man, great songs are great songs. And so I had a good time doing, you know, doing A and R stuff. And uh, it's actually how Farrell and I really connected because Farrell and I were friends, but I tried to sign him when he was doing a Desire record. <clears throat> and uh, you know, Sony was at first they were like resistant, and I brought him up there. And he, Played those songs, and then Donnie Einer, who was the CEO at the time, uh, you know, he invited us up to his office, and it was funny because I, I had been working in the building for a year, and I'd never been invited to Donnie's office until Farrell, <laughs> until we brought that Farrell record in, and he, and he brought him up there, and we tried to get it done, but then uh, Farrell, he ended up going with Steve Rifkin, and I think it was because, you know, Steve Rifkin had a better track record in hip hop, you know what I mean? So, uh, Sony wasn't exactly the bastion for hip hop at the time, so you know. I, I, it didn't matter, but when I left Sony, I started to work with Fowl right out of the box because I just, I, I, you know, I love, love, love him as an artist, and oh, I know, yeah. I knew him since like '99. So, uh, that's, okay, so now, all right, so because, so that kind of began the whole talk about. 
I guess talking with Pharaoh and being like, hey, we could start this war media thing together. You know what well, I mean? what happened? What, what happened with that was like when I when I left Sony, I saw the writing on the wall in terms of what major labels were becoming. And what I knew is that an artist like Pharaoh, who is ridiculously respected culturally, is not as respected on the business side. You know, and um, you know, he, he's he's never done astronomical numbers uh, in sales. And so, how do you get in a situation where, without selling your soul, and you know, without doing something that makes you look like you know the old guy at the club? You know, how do you continue to do incredible art and get respected, you know, for the genius that you are? Um, the major label system is, is not set up for that, especially now. The major label system is set up for, you know, it's strike, hit, 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 you know what I mean? And um, I felt like we needed to create a, a place that he would be safe to create in. And at this, quite frankly, at this point, he should be an owner. You know, he should own what he's doing. He's, he, you know, he's a, he's a 20-year vet. He's never felt fallen off. He's always done great work. So you should own what you're doing. And as opposed to trying to chase kids around, you know, you should be like, yo, this is what I'm doing right here. And I'm, a, I'm an elder statesman, but I'm not the old dude. You know what I mean? And my music is still current and my music is still relevant. It's relevant coming from this voice. And, you know, when you make an album like War or you make an album like Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, you know, just to, 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 be, to be courageous enough to make a record like that is, is uh, and to talk about personal, this is the best record, you know, the most introspective record he's ever made in terms of talking about his own personal issues and talking about, you know, suicide and, and talking about, you know, depression and, and things that, you know, quite frankly, kids just really don't talk about. And that's what you're supposed to do as a, as a, as a, a genius and elder statesman. All right, yeah, word up, definitely, because uh, uh, th along in that group, I would say like De La Soul, you know, what I'm saying definitely. You know what I'm saying? Without question. That group. Um, who else? De La's are heroes. Yeah, yeah, big okay. props. Big props never, to them. They never. gave everyone. They gave everyone a Valentine's Day gift yesterday. Yeah. Man, and, and I was on there too, getting because I, I, I didn't have the Bionics joint. I got my Bionics, and I got the rarities. Yes. I got to update my cassettes, so. <laughs> Yeah, because I had you know, was, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, De La, you know, we, we tour the world all the time, and De La is the group we run into the most. You know what I'm saying? And we just did, um, we did a great festival over the summer in Copenhagen with De La and Wu-Tang and MF Doom. Um, Crazy. Called the Vanguard Festival. But, you know, we run into De La all the time, you know. And uh, I, I, I say they're our heroes because, you know, to have that level of consistency, to never have done a whack record, to always be like, you know, really true to what you're doing, and uh, and still have, still garner the love and respect of the, of the people is is all you could ever ask for in this business. Yeah, definitely, definitely. They are so good live too. I saw them once. You I gotta go see them again because it was one of the best shows I'd ever seen. It was so good. Ridiculous. If you ever get a chance to see Daylight like Soul. Or Farrell Mosh, for that matter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I saw a over the summer yeah. uh, with LL Cool J, Public Enemy, and uh, yeah, Andy yeah. Slick Rick. Yeah, I well, saw uh, Farrell cool. a couple of times, but it was uh, – the last one was at A3C, A3C, and he shut it down. It was yes. it was. Crazy. Oh, the one – yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he shut down Atlanta. Like, it's just – it was amazing. It was crazy. You, you, don't, you never realize how many joints an artist has – until they're like performing it, and then you find yourself just saying all the words to it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, wow, oh, oh, I know this one, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you get that. What's amazing about thing. that is that, what's amazing about that is that at A3C, he didn't even touch any organized confusion records. You know? Yeah. If he puts that in there, he could be on stage for three hours, you know? <laughs> then they're going to have to pay him a lot more, so I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no doubt. I'm Absolutely. But I'm just saying, he has a great, having a great catalog that is timeless. Is is a is you know is absolute. It's a gift and a curse, but it's really a gift, you know. Yeah, definitely. All right, so now okay, so post traumatic uh, stress disorder yes. drops April fifteenth. Yes, indeed. Bad so, MF out right now on iTunes and and your other fine digital carriers. Yep. 
Um, and it played on our show. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into that also. Played on our show. We have it on, uh, you know, Spotify and Amazons and uh, the world. And um, yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder coming uh, April 15th. All right. Now, but Great album. Coming even sooner, though, you guys have this uh, unofficial Black Dynamite uh, mixtape dropping. Woo! With yeah. the good folks at um, Jamla Records, with Absolutely. Rap Genius, and Digiwax. And Digiwax. So, so a lot now, of big dogs in that in that yeah, sentence. Exactly. So now I want to, because like I said on the graphic, I want to do like a case study. Because it's all well and good to talk about, yeah, you guys got to put out music or whatever. I want to use that as like a case study to where, all right, it started off this way. And then we got with these people at this time. You know what I'm saying? Like getting the okay. specifics of it. You know what I mean? Okay, so, now, so what happened was, yeah, um, is a producer named Patin. Yep, who, uh, the Soul uh, Council, uh, Jamla Records. Oh, so kind of, exactly, who produced "Let My People Go" on Pharrell Manch's uh, War album, and which is how I met him. And he also produced uh, songs that you haven't heard yet from Gene Gray. And uh, so you know, he was he was kind of down with us as well. And you know, obviously Gene's relationship with Knife Wonder, and you know, so we have. A relationship, and he he started working on um, Boondocks as you know one of the guys that was doing the music for Boondocks, and so he met Carl, uh, who who does the stuff for Black Dynamite, and so when Carl left to go left Boondocks to do Black Dynamite, he brought for Ten with him, and so for Ten had this idea to do a mixtape based on you know the show. So this was done a couple years ago, and um. So what he did was he took the Black Dynamite movie soundtrack that Adrian Young did. Adrian and Young is the man, by the way. Chopped it and, and made tracks. And then and then we grabbed up he grabbed up uh, you know, all the MCs that he works with, which are primarily Jamla artists and war media artists, you know? And so, you know, he put it together and we were about to put it out and then we kinda got stopped and we just kinda just never did it. And then when we revisited it, we said, how can we put it out, like, really, literally, just for free, but really good quality stuff, and let's put it out, and how, who can we partner with? And so this is where uh, the genius of a Satori comes in, because Satori was like, let's get, you know, Rap Genius, and let's try to find a, do an initiative with them where, they, where they'll, um, you know, put up, annotate the lyrics, and put up, you know, put up some, uh, the music first, we'll release kind of, four things before we dropped the whole project. And then, uh, you know, we had a relationship with Digiwax, and we said, look, Digiwax will power the, the mixtape. So it's kind of like, it's unofficial because it's not sanctioned, and, you know, we ain't asked nobody about it. But, you know what I'm saying, we are connected very much into it. And what's beautiful about it is the way uh, all of the MCs kind of took on the characters that, you know, they were portraying, you know. Uh, so... Uh, Farrell does, uh, you know, Life of a Hustler. He's like in total pimp mode, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, Sky Zoo and Torre, and you know, GQ, and you know, um, Rhapsody with Mila Machenko, and you know, like yo, really, like really a really thorough, thorough. Pro what you're getting is a whole lot, you know, for nothing, and uh, it's it's like you know. This is what hip hop is, man. This is like, you know, kind of forming like Voltron and coming together for a project that's this dope around a show that we all love and, you know, with people that we, we really rock with. We really rock with Fatin. We really rock with Jamla. We really rock with Rap uh, rap Genius. And we really rock with uh, Digiwax. So these are all people I've known for years and years and years. And we just called on each other to kind of make something special for the people. And I think we all end up benefiting from it, you know? Yeah, definitely. So that's dope. So the project was done for like two years then. And then it was about... Like a year and a half, of, I think, two years, yeah. Uh, and then it was about just kind of like finding the proper pieces to put it all together to get it out the way you want, basically. Exactly, exactly. And then we wanted, we knew we wanted to get it out before the second season started, you know? And once again, um, you know, I, I big up Satori for that. She's the, she's the lead on this project. She... uh. You know, without her, it probably wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? So she she was like, you know, she she really made the rap genius connect, which was kind of the thing that, you know, she figured out how to make that work, and you know, just kind of making sure that everybody's in place and everybody gets what they need in at the same at the right time, and 
you know, as a project manager, she's second to none. So yeah. big up to Tori now, on how, that. Now, how long did, was she working on the project beforehand? Cause I'm just because a lot of times people will just put stuff out and not have like a plan. Well, well, she got involved maybe six months ago. You know what I mean? Where she was like, "Let's figure this out." The music was already done, and it was kind of like what it was was, and this is another kind of case study. It was sitting there. You know, it's all this great music kind of sitting there, and we kind of had no real plan for it, you know? So sometimes you got to just put somebody on something to figure out how to generate something out of it, and she figured it out, you know? All right, word up. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to play a track off there. You mentioned that Rhapsody track with Mela yeah. Machinko, and yeah. it was also on War Media, right? Mela Machinko? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, we work with Mila a lot, you know? Mila. So, and what we do with War, we do a bunch of partnerships and, you know, uh, when we hear something we love, we we'll, 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 we'll help put it out, or we help, you know what I mean? So we we've done that with Mr. Len, and we've done it, you know. And Mila has been a long time, same background for Gene, same background for Pharaoh. Has been on a bunch of those records, and so you know, she Definitely. she down with us. All right, cool. So I'm gonna play that track with her and Rhapsody, uh, produced by Faten Faten. Yep. And uh, called New Black Love off that off the unofficial mixtape dropping on Tuesday, coming up. Dropping Tuesday, yes. yes. Or me, Drop it through uh, Digiwax. Digiwax.com is where you can, you can get it. Yeah, Digiwax and Rap Genius. That's a crazy yeah. lineup. All right, cool. So we're going to get into these, this joint. We'll be right back. Behind the scenes, I want to kind of talk about uh, Mila. Alt Mila. Yeah. A little bit more, too. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been playing some of her stuff also. So I want to Yeah, 9 a.m. Blues is really dope. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, it's our show. We'll be right back. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, word, we're going to get into this joint. Thank you very much. Be right. Peace. So yeah, so tell me, how, like, what, uh, Mila? How how did you guys get in contact? You know what I'm saying? Mila, Mila, M Mila. I'm never gonna get that right. Mila. Hello? Oh, did you freeze? Oh, what happened uh, there? Because I said the name wrong. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Of course. Yeah, he froze up. Hey, uh, maybe use the chat. It says he's in the chat still. Oh, which, uh... Maybe try to get him to log out, log back in or something? Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah, it might come back. Oh, that's always something. Technology, boy, just failing me. Yeah. It's pretty impressive, though, because it does get us to form, like, Voltron, like you were saying. We're all yeah, this, over the place. This is crazy. We're all over the planet. I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm going to do a show in London, Ontario, consignment show. Lots of, lots of artists on the bill. It should be pretty cool. All right, all right. Uh, well, sometimes well, I don't know. Sometimes when there's a lot of artists on the bill, you're like, I mean, they have to be really dope. I mean, like for me, if I see like ten names on a flyer, I'm be like, yeah, I don't know. Especially if it's like names I've never heard before, because not yeah. everybody raps. So that's the thing. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm, I'm a little weary about that type of stuff. Well, we got a legend, a Canadian legend. I don't know how well known he is down there, but Ghetto Socks is there. Yeah, you mentioned him before. I can't remember the name. The name is pretty damn funny. Yeah, it, it's a funny name, but he is he is dope. Like what he does. Yep. Hey, right, you're back. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so we're up. So, uh, Ms. Machinko. Yeah, you know Mila. It's Mila. Word up. Okay. Yeah, Mila, it was, uh, I met Mila, she was uh, singing background for Pharaoh. She been sing she sang background for Pharaoh for 10 years, or seven years, eight years, something like that. And, uh, you know, just dope singer, you know, became a good friend. And, you know, trying to encourage her to be, um, you know, to be an artist, you know, because she's a brilliant writer and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, top tier singer. And uh, she put out a project called Hove Said It Best. Yep, we, we played a joint there. Yep. Yeah, and uh, she just recently herself put out a joint called 9 a.m. Blues. Uh, and you can get it via Bandcamp. And uh, really stellar work. So she's brilliant, you know. Um, you know, and I work with her whenever she needs help. I got her, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, trying to just – she's just working on her lane. She's she's writing. She's doing a lot of work with Jamla, uh, Soul Council. She does uh, – Working with Heather Victoria down there and uh, and those folks and uh, obviously you know you've heard it on Quali's record and on um, Joe Budden and you know just a Mary Torre just a myriad of of, of you know Sky Zoo. so 
you know, she's just she's just like she's you know, she's, she's a like go-to person. Stripes, you know what I'm saying? Like getting the yeah. resume up, pretty much. Yeah, and she and she's a go-to person, man. She's just like if you want your your joint right and you want it to be, you know, she's gonna sing it right. She's gonna put the right tone on it, the right the right feel. She's 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 a beast on it, you know. And uh, I think you're gonna hear a lot of great things from her, you know, uh, for years and years and years to come. All right, we look forward to playing it here on our show. You know yeah, yeah. Now, uh, right, speaking of another beast, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we've got actually Jean Grey scheduled next week on the show. Yeah, Jean is, Jean is incredible. Jean is probably the most talented person pound for pound I ever ever met. All right. You know, just anything she wants to do, she can do. And I've never, I've never met anybody like that. Any, anything she thinks of in her mind, you know, we already know she's a beast of an MC. She's an incredible. Uh, songwriter she's a great comedy writer she's a great writer in general uh i don't know if you've seen her show life with genie yeah episode, <laughs> episode two dropped last night yeah chillax. Uh, <laughs> yeah, chillax. uh you know she wrote directed you know produced that whole show um you know she edits it she does the camera work. she does she does everything you know and uh she uh so it's jeangraytv.com if you don't if you don't know jeangraytv.com g r a e but she um she's a, she's just she's an otherworldly talent I've never met anyone that you know has no fear in terms of how to in terms of art you know and and just whatever she wants to do she will figure a way to do it and that's it's 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 a it's a real pleasure to be around that energy you know. She's she's the, you know she's one of the greatest and you know it it obviously depends on how you measure greatness but the way I measure greatness she's she's you know by far without question one of the greatest and I don't I don't put attached female to that I'm just saying she's one of the greatest you know what I'm saying so how, how did you meet her initially oh well you know she was she she was you know tight with Pharaoh and uh, Mila and the crew already I met her. Uh, a few times earlier, but where I really became cool with uh, Jean was uh, her and Mila were roommates, and Farrow lived above them, so they all lived in the same building. And I was working with, with me and Farrow were working on a war album, and so the, you know, and Jean's on top of everything else she does, she's probably the best chef I know. And so she would cook all the time, but we'd be down there eating, and you know, and just just doing it. And I, you know, one, you know, a couple times I'd be like, yo, you know, if you ever need help with anything, and, you know, we started just you know vibing. And working on stuff, and you know, and and you know, we made the connection that way, you know. But she's 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 a otherworldly talent, and you know, she's gonna be around forever. So you know, she ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, now tell me, uh, because we we have her on the show next week, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. scheduled, and uh, she, I saw her at A3C, but I didn't want to say hi or anything because she looked, yeah. you know, like you know, like not don't talk to me. You know, what I'm saying, so I don't, I'm not trying to get her mad. So what what is one thing that I not need not to say to her? Don't call her a fem C. Okay. <laughs> Don't compare her to other females because, you know, she's like the only connection you're trying to make is that she has a vagina. You know, like the th the reality is is that when you talk about her MC skills or you talk about any skills, she's competitive with anybody you put in front of her, whether it's uh -huh. you know, male, female, whatever, Martian. So and and, and you know just do your homework like. You know, people ask Gene questions that are, you know, Googleable. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, figure out what it is. Like, let's let's try to have a, a, an intelligent dialogue about art and about, you know, life and whatever it is, and and not not, you know, not the typical nonsense. But I see, you know, just talking to you about myself. You know, I see you do your homework, so you'll be fine. Oh, okay, cool. Cause like, I'm I I don't want to get on her bad side. I yeah, you know, just don't don't be dumb. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and, and, and don't, don't, you know, you're my favorite female MC. It's like, is a, is a dumb thing to say. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. So. And then, like, what is it like to be like a female MC? Like, like she would know how it felt to be a male MC or something. Exactly. Like, yeah, how do you, you know, how do you, you know, you could ask her what it feels like to be the best. You know, <laughs> you know, but she, but she's incredible, and and she's an incredible artist and presence, and she's one of the smartest people I know. Yeah, I want to well. see if she's gonna get back into production because I want to see I want to see some more run rush run run shots. The, the, the whole the whole the guy from Down series. Yeah. And Jeannie, she produced she produced yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. That's so all her. 
I want to see some Run Run Shaw. You know what I'm saying? Like official Run Run Shaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she, she, so she, she's back. You know, she never left production. She's still producing. Yeah. And, um, you know. She just had a book, like a read-along yes. book, too. It's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. Still, like, yeah. Her output over the last six months has been un- unmatched, you know? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing. And watching it is, like, scary. You know, it's scary because... You know how does she how does she pull it off? I, I have no idea, but she, she does. She not sleep or something. I don't think she's human. She doesn't sleep. That's true. She does <laughs> all not right. sleep. All right, now cool. Uh, all right, now we're gonna play play a Jean Grey track. Okay. Uh, name a track. I want to see if I have it uh, queued up. I want to see if we're on the same thing here. Uh, okay. Well, my my track off of Gotham One is Before the Summer Broke. I love that. Oh uh, yeah, that wasn't clean. No. Uh, off of um, you have Genie. Uh no, I don't have that one. Okay, I've got, what you uh, got, man? Well, I mean that that Effery level three thousand. Yeah, oh, whoa, ridiculous. That is crazy, and that that's a specific reason. Like the the skit in there, yeah. Is like the reason why I don't want to get her mad, cause yeah, <laughs> I really think she would do that. Like through the actual computer screen, right? I think she would do that. So yeah. I'm gonna play the, that track. The level of skill on that is is unmatched. So, yeah, play that. It's crazy. We're going to get into that. All right, okay. cool. Um, you guys are tuning in to our show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, uh, Chase, what's the, the station in Canada? 93.3 CFMU, Dope FM. All right, cool, cool. And uh, big shout out to the good folks. Hip Hop is Bled. Uh, over 1,700 members, Google Plus community. And uh, KevinNottingham.com, TheWordIsBond.com, ChaseMarsh.com, and It'sOurShow.net. Uh, and I want to shout out everybody in the chat room. We have uh, Frank. Ruby Tuesday out in the Midwest, and uh, my thing froze up on me, so I'll start you guys out later. All right, cool. So this is Effery Level 3000 by Gene Woo! Gray, our guest next week. And then I want to talk about some more stuff behind the scenes and things, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have, like, a random crazy story about Gene, that'd be good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, I got mad stories. All right, nice. Uh, <laughs> so this is Gene Gray, our guest uh, next week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be right back. Easy. Peace. All right, cool. So now, uh, yeah. So any random crazy stories? Man, you know, I I can't. I, I I'm not sure I could say any of these stories. <laughs> oh, she's gonna appear in the back, like she's gonna come through that mirror. Yeah, it just it's just you know because you know other people will be incriminated. Um, yeah. More than anything, like I said, the things that people don't know about Jean, um, because she's so, you know, is notorious in terms of. You know her, you know her wit and her sharp. You know, I think that's what's really scary. Like she might just say something back to you crazy, and you're just gonna yeah. look like, uh, what? But she's she's actually, you know, one of one of the sweetest, you know, kindest people I know. I know that doesn't match the, you know, the persona, but she really is. And she, like I said, she she cooks for you, and she she's a nurturing, really nurturing person. Okay. When she but she loves you, she loves you hard, you know. Okay. And um, you know, she is. You know, she comes from uh, her parents are musicians. You know, yep. her mom like passed away exactly. recently. Love to her mom, Satima B. Benjamin. But uh, singers and and, and you know, father Abdullah Ibrahim. You know, it, 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 you know, world class jazz pianist. So she comes from art. You know, and so she has no fear of art and fear of you know being you know making a living from art. And uh, you know, she's she's just you know I, I think she's incredibly misunderstood because of the persona, but uh, has no problem via her art being incredibly vulnerable. And that's, that's what makes, I believe, great, great artists, is when your, your ability to be vulnerable is, um, and, and, and to open your, yourself up to, you know, things that people are afraid to go to, because um, most people, you know, and it's ironic that she's named after a superhero. Most people want to be superheroes all the time on records but what really touches people is when you you know crack that shell and you get into the into the heart of it and if you listen to records like you know you and me and and you know these are records that like she's pouring her heart out and uh she has a really unique ability to do that in a way that i haven't heard many artists i think pharaoh has it as well which is why i'm uh i'm attracted to those kind of artists you know that's the kind of uh kind of folks I always want to be connected to. All right, all right. 
And now um, Chase has like a question he's been asking all our guests. You know what I'm saying? What's that? On the series. Yeah, I would like to know what your must-have rap album is. An album that you have to have in your collection that you think everyone should listen to. Speaking of De La Soul, it should be De La Soul, Balloon Mind State. I think it's nice. the most underrated De La album. Uh, the song I Am, I Be, Changed My Life. Uh, really, really, really great, incredible, incredible. I believe that's the last album Prince Paul produced as well. Uh, really great hip-hop. And um, once again, vulnerable and open and uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hip hop record. And I will not, I, you know, you have to have War by Farrell Munch. If no, for no other reason for the song uh, Holly Selassie Karate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. And, and no yes. other reason for that. And uh, because I think it's also vulnerable, and you know, it's bragging on one side, and it's 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 vulnerable on the other side. And I think there's there's moments on there. And what happens in this ADD culture we live in is that you miss, you know, you miss stuff. And I think if you go back and listen to War in its entirety, you'll you'll find stuff that you're like, Damn, I didn't even realize that was there. Wow, I missed that whole. You know, there's there's gems on that record that nobody even got to. And uh, so you know, I, I, I gotta say one of my own. But yeah, if I was saying out of my own cruise catalog. I would say uh, De La, uh, Below My State. Nice. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of people aren't pro like producing complete hip-hop albums where you can get all those range of emotions. You know yeah, saying? because people aren't listening like that anymore. And so it, it becomes frustrating. I mean, Farrell and I were talking about it. He said he thinks this was probably his last album, not in a retiring way, but his last album in a, in a way of like, you know, Top to bottom album. Oh wow! Does that mean he'd be moving more towards like doing singles and EPs well, and things? Specialty projects, EPs and stuff, because you know he, he Pharaoh pours his heart out in a way that a lot of artists don't do. So just trying to be like you know like let's make sure we do, um, you know. He, People say, why does it take Farrell so long to do records? It's because he's 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 really doing the record, you know? It's not a gimmick. He's really putting that that level of time and effort and art into what he's doing. And uh some some instances he feels underappreciated, you know, in, in that regard. Um, everybody knows he can spit, everybody knows he's a great MC. But he's a he's a he's a great producer of music and of art. And uh, you know, for that aspect to not be totally appreciated, you know, it, I'm sure it gets frustrating. And um, so he's like, yeah, I think this is the last, you know, top to bottom I'm going to do like this because, you know, I'm, I'm, well, he said, well, let's see how it's appreciated. I think it's his best work. I think it's probably the best collect collection of songs he's ever done. It's interesting to see how hip-hop goes in cycles, though, because, you know, hip-hop as a genre didn't start out with the album. It started out with singles. Absolutely. And now it seems like it's almost back to that. It seems like people are just dropping out, dropping single stuff. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know, obviously the Kendrick Lamar album, you know, flies in the face of that a bit, but um, I even think in the sense of a Kendrick's album, I don't know if people appreciated the level of artistry that went into making that complete thought, you know? Um that was a great album, but I think the people that appreciated it as being a great album were older, were over 30. <laughs> Those were the people that were like, oh, this feels like, you know, one of those records. It feels like, you know, but uh, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to pour your heart and soul into something, into this film, and people only want to see the trailers, you know? So it's, um, like I said, you know, when I spoke, I spoke to him literally earlier today. He's in Europe performing, and he was like, I, "I think this might be my last album, man." You know, he said, "I love it. I feel like it completes the, you know, the um, the cycle, you know, internal affairs, desire, war, PTSD." He feels like it's a complete. That whole series is a complete thought, and um, that he, you know, he may move on to doing uh, you know, some other other concept stuff. You know, he's never going to stop doing music, so it's not, you know, I'm not announcing a retirement and no nonsense like that. But I'm saying that, he's, you know, the way he does music and the way the music is distributed, 
this is this may be the last traditional way we do things. Uh, no, and I say may because we don't know. You know. Yeah, I mean it's dope that war media we are renegades are like it's set up for that, so it's not just yeah, exactly. a traditional label. Exactly. You know, that's why we didn't call it War Records, you know, because it's like, it's a media company, and so we might be releasing stuff, you know, through the visual format. It might be, you know, we, we just, we'll just figure it out. We're not going to put any constraints on what we're doing. Uh, we just know we're not going to bite, you know. Well, we are going to bite if it's good, but you know, <laughs> we're not, we're, but we're, we're going to improve we're, on it. We're going to we're gonna try to have as much original thought as we can and be courageous in the way that we present stuff. And you know, um, and try to just give you an alternative point of view. Like you know, what we're not necessarily doing, although Bad MF may fly in the face of this a little bit, we're not necessarily caring what anybody else is doing, uh, or even knocking it because there's a bunch of stuff that's happening that we think is brilliant. But um, we know that any whatever you eat, if you eat it every day, you're gonna want an alternative. You know what I mean? So. We try to provide that alternative. So, you know, if you want to hear things that are more, you know, more thought out, more complex, more, uh, you know, deeper layered, you know, if you want to see art and visuals that are, you know, not just the typicals in front of the bodega joint, you know what I mean? Then, you know, you, you, you might want to come see us. I mean, it's all about balance. By the way, uh, we're on WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. Then you guys' basketball game just ended, so we're on air also. And what they just heard a part of was Effery Level 3000 by G. And speaking about like levels and just thought and planned out, like that track is amazing. Like, layers, just... man. Layers. And that's all her, man. That's like, I heard that track. It blew my mind. I was, I was like, I kept listening to it over and over again to try to catch, you know, and I still don't think I caught everything, you know? Yeah, like, you listen to it, and then you'll hear something in, like, the actual background of the track, or, like, when she's, yeah. at the end, when she's just being all Jean Grey, like... Yeah, she, she, she's, like I said, one of, the, one of the best to ever do it, period, no qualification. Oh, by the one way, the, the folks just tuned in, in uh, we got Guy of War Media, W-A-R, We Are Renegade Media, uh, Jean Grey, Feral Monch. Uh, Rock, a Helter Skelter, who he interviewed at A3C. That's when I first met Satori, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Rock, um, man. Big Rock. Uh, is the last American Boy Scout? Last, last American B-Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B-Boy, yeah, yeah. B-Boy, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mystic. Like, yeah. Just a whole bunch of people we play on the show. Uh, and, you know, we, we also have, like, you know, associates, you know, people that we rock with, like Aquile Chris or Denmark. Or, you know, we want to do projects with them. And so a lot of the, it, it's a very loose collective, you know what I mean, and um, there's a lot of people down with us that, you know, that might not necessarily be coming through our platform, but, you know, we're down with a lot of folks, and uh, so, you know, we, we don't uh, we don't limit, you know, who, you know, you never know what, who might be coming through these, these chambers, you know? Nice, nice. All right, cool. Um, And there's uh, one, like, final joint, because, I mean, we kept you for, like, an hour, you know what I'm saying? I know you okay. got a whole media conglomerate to run, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Big shout to Satori once again for hooking this all up. Yes, but, um, indeed. Have you ever had a moment where you were just like, you just like kind of like sat back or like, damn, hip-hop got me here, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, oh, you know, like all, of the all of the time. Listen, man, I'm, I'm, I am the product of, of hip-hop, and, you know, the time it hit me the hardest was I, was I went to uh, Cape Town, South Africa with with a uh, Gene and Farrell. Hi. Oh, oh, come on! He was talking about Africa. Oh, what's going on? Oh, Sorry. Google Hangout. Oh. Like, oh, he dropped out. Oh, he was like, man, we were in um, Africa, and then what? What? what, what and then what? Here we go. The, are you on the Google website? I mean, are you on the website? Technology. Sorry about that. Oh no, you're good. Like, and that was a perfect cliffhanger. Like, we're in Africa and ah. Oh. So we went to the uh, Cape Town International Jazz Festival, um, and okay, it was interesting because I um. We all got to the airport. And Lauren Hill was on the set, and you know, Third World. We got to the airport, so we're in the airport with Lauren Hill, and it's Gene Farrell, our bands, uh, everybody. And I couldn't get on the plane because okay. I didn't have a, a, a 
a um, a visa page available in my passport because that's how much I've traveled, you know, the world, right? And so they all went ahead of me. I had to go back to the consulate, get a, go back to the passport office, get an extra page, and catch the flight the next day. So I flew by myself, and I get off the plane in South Africa, and you know, you go to the uh, you know customs. And the person at customs said, welcome home. And I almost cried. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, Jean is from uh, Cape Town. And uh, so her family was there. And I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. Never, you know, I'm a dude, I'm a dude from the projects, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, never in my life would I think I would ever be in Cape Town. Uh, and I'm sitting there, we rented a house, and I'm looking over, and I'm looking at Table Mountain, and really, really just an amazing, just an amazing experience. And I realized that it's all because of hip-hop, and it's all because of these wonderful people. And the path that I've taken, I wouldn't have taken another path. You know, I could have taken a path that might have garnered me more money or more fame, but I'm so glad that it happened this way. And I've been, you know, traveled the world five times, you know, and uh, I've been on six continents, and uh, it's all hip hop, you know, and it's it's been hip hop since I was, you know, eight years old, and uh, yeah, with the Force MCs, and Force MCs, and it's been it's been that, and I, I I've I've seen so much, and I, I've I've been around my heroes, and I've I, I, you know sometimes I'm in places and I gotta pinch myself, you know, I we went I went with Gene to. Uh, you know, Rio, the film of Kwali video with Sale George and Pate De Jesus, and it was like, really? I'm here with Sale George, Knockout Ned from, you know, City of God, and, you know what I mean? Like, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's real, and, and, but mostly these beautiful, beautiful relationships with these beautiful people that I've met, and I've maintained a lot of them, and, uh, you know, to quote Jay-Z, I got a good life, man. You know, you know? <laughs> I can't, I can't complain, you know? Yeah, that's dope. All right, word up. So, um, yeah, well, uh, thank you very much, you know what I'm saying, for taking the time out. And, Yo, this um, is wonderful. Like I said, I don't usually get get asked to, to express myself much. You know I, what? The door is open at any I'm time. Sorry, um, Just let me know. I appreciate the platform. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because there's so much more I want to get into also, you know what I'm saying? And especially I, when these projects are dropping. So I, definitely I appreciate it. With, real quick before I leave. Yeah, do what you got to do. Great, GeneGreatTV.com for the Life of Genie episode one and two is on there. Make sure you follow Gene at Gene Greasy. Um, Pharaoh Monch at Pharaoh Monch, Pharaoh.com. Pharaoh's... Uh, that, um, excuse me, Bad MF is on uh, iTunes now. PTSD, April 15th. Um, Mystic coming soon. Mila at uh, milamachinko.com and uh, Bandcamp for 9 a.m. Blues. Mr. Len. Um, you know, just everybody, man. At, oh, the new war, the war media website will be up in about 30 days. <laughs> I've, re I've revamped it. And we, you know, before the before the Farrell album drops, we'll have a new war, warmedia.com. All right. website as well. Uh, shout out to Satori. Yes. And, uh, you know, to all the fam that helps me do this. And, uh, you know, it's love, man. Appreciate y'all. Uh, anytime. So anything you need from us, you know what I'm saying, let us know. Just and keep playing it, man. Keep doing what y'all doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Just keep, you know, when you hear something you did, you know, make sure that people are aware of it, man, because mm -hmm. you, you guys are the ones that allow us to even survive, man, because, you know, we're not going to get the, you know, the other, the other folks. So you know what I'm saying. We need the folks that, that, that really are passionate about what we do, to, to consistently, consistently, uh, bang away for us, and consistently let people know what we're doing. Because without y'all, we, we can't survive. So thank you. I, thank you. You know what I'm saying for having that stuff that we can support. Which <laughs> All right. Well, holler at us if you need us, man. You know how to get us. I appreciate you, fam. So um, so uh, real quick, your social networks, if heads want to reach out. Oh, at War Media. And Guy Rute, R O U T T E, Guy Rute on Facebook, and um, I got War Media page on Facebook as well. Um, that's it. Uh, <laughs> anybody else in the time film strip? Anybody else gonna say anything? No, just uh, chasemarch.com, the word is bond.com. Um, get at me on Twitter. All right, and uh, Mr. Grace? Yeah, uh, nothing else. Just if you're into hip hop, you're on Google Plus. Check out Hip Hop is Bled. 
on Google Plus, the community, and uh, participate Over with us. Over 1,700 members. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Over 1,700 members. A lot of goodness on that. Um, also, it's our show.net, kevingnottingham.com, and uh, all over the place. So, once again, Guy, thank you very much. And like I said, anytime you want to come on, let me know, and the door is open. Thanks. Appreciate you. All right, fam. And we're going to get into Bat MF. We're going to play the joint. And then Woo! we're going to get into Indy's Eternal Streets in this Etern beat burn. All right, F thank swag, you guys. I got boxy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. All right, be easy. Peace. Uh, peace, peace. All right, peace. All right, so thank you guys. Once again, thank you guys. You know what I'm saying? I know we had some technical difficulties, but it worked out, so dope. Work. Yep. All right, fellas. Thank you, guys. Till uh, next week. Next week, Gene Gray. Looking forward to it. That should be interesting. could be really awesome. Yeah, I'll be really there. Bad. Really awesome or really bad. So, <laughs> Don't piss her off. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to... I am so... Not, cause she, she mushed my homeboy, uh, Willie Edwards <laughs> Jr., in his video. Oh, the baby finds it funny. That's cool. So hopefully <laughs> it won't happen to me. All right, so uh, thank you guys. I'm going to get this, uh, where is the overlay? There we go. All right, so thanks, everybody, that tuned in. You know what I'm saying? That was the homie guy. All right, be easy. Peace, All peace. Right. I'll see you All soon. Right. Peace. Uh, so, yeah, that was the homie guy, and that is not the damn, uh, man, my technology boy today is not working. Uh, you said something, uh, Miss uh, Etern? Yeah, actually, we have uh, Moody Tuesday on the phone, and he is having trouble. He wants to know what is the exact Oh, so you have to talk into the mic because people can't hear you. Like, uh, I don't really want to. Well, I mean, it's like me talking to myself. So, um, the exact process to join the uh, Google Hangout. Okay, yeah. So shows. to do that, you have to actually beforehand, because there's so much random stuff that goes on during that we can't just have people coming in and out. You know what I'm saying? Because if right. they're if they're internet connection is not good, like we have to test this stuff out. So if the internet connection is not good, then it's going to make everything else worse. And then like, if they're typing on the keyboard, it's, it's all a type of craziness. So we have to do that beforehand. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, so during the week or what have you. So I'm not going to do it during the Jean Grey one, though, because I don't want Jean Grey mad at me. So I'm going to try to cut down all the things that could so go So does he wrong. go to the website and he'll be able to? Yeah, he'll be able to go to the website, um, itsourshow.net, and I have ask a question there. You'll have to ask a question. And if it's and cool, that'll make you yeah, we'll, we'll get you. Like if it's a cool question, then I'll have you on. You know what I'm saying? So, Did you get that? All right, uh, cool. So we're gonna get into it. Big shouts to Guy once again. You know what I'm saying for uh, hanging out with us. Okay. We're gonna get to this joint. This is Feral the Munch, is Bad the MF. Show, not gonna be able to and um, join the Hangout, yeah, so we're gonna get into it. And then we get into Easy Eternal Streets. So Thank you guys for tuning in. It's our show, show WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. All right, busy. Peace. And then if there is. Um, if it's a good question and he thinks that, you know, it would be good to add to the show, then he'll add you to the Google Hangout. It's not like, a, you know, just anyone can get into the Google Hangout because um, he doesn't want a bunch of craziness going on uh, when whoever is on the interview, he is on air or whatever. So next week, if you want to join it, just click that button in the website. It says ask a question, and um, he'll, he'll decide. It's on the website. You'll see it. But next week, I'm sorry, on the Our Show website, yes. And then um, next week he said he's probably not going to have anyone in the Google Hangout, though, for Jean Grey. They can but still ask questions. They, you can still ask questions, so go to the website and click that click that button on there that says ask, ask a question. Mm -hmm. Right. Ask a question. <laughs> 